Hey guys, Duke Dude here. Boy, are we in for a treat today. <laughs> I never thought I'd actually get to play the um, this version. But as you can see, this is actually Four Swords. Originally, the game was released for the Game Boy Advance when it was bundled with a port of A Link to the Past. And, of course, this is the Anniversary Edition. Wasn't sure if the Anniversary Edition was... Uh, Available in emulation form, but apparently it is. But it, it really varies on the emulator, to be honest, because this um, this is tricky to actually get it to work properly. I know I haven't really uploaded anything for Switch related in the past, uh, I guess you could say, three years. For those who were unaware, at that time I was working at a local school, and it took uh, it took up a lot of my time. That and I was going through some creative burnout and I was really struggling to get back on track of things. Uh, regardless, I figured that, you know, instead of like working on the Four Swords episode at the moment, how about if we like reminisce on the original concept? Um, from what I can tell, the game was, apart from being a multiplayer Zelda game, multiplayer adventure game, I feel like it tried to be like Mario Party in a sense because that one actually worked. Mario Party has become a staple of Nintendo, and there have been over like 10 games of, uh, of the franchise. While the Four Swords, it tried to work with the, this game and later Four Swords Adventures. Then they tried to reinvent the, the whole multiplayer Zelda concept with Triforce Heroes. And they're usually like the least popular games of the group, of the, of the Zelda um, franchise as a whole. Because, let's face it, Zelda has always been a one-player game. But, regardless, there has been a, uh, a fan following over the years of um, Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures, respectively. I don't know if I have anything to do with it, but maybe it could have contributed. Now, as for the um, origin of Four Swords Misadventures, I should point out that originally, <laughs> the game... Well, not the game, but the, the story itself kind of came about... <sighs> this may sound weird, but I... The, the idea just came about when I was uh, at a local casino in uh, in the island of Margarita. I was bored to death. My parents were compulsive gamblers. I was 19 years old at the time. I was... I didn't know what to do. I didn't have the money to gamble. So I figured I'd just come up with some ideas and just write them down on a notebook. And, uh, of course, at the time, I was watching this whole, um, this adaptation of a webcomic called 8-Bit Theater. Which is a Final Fantasy webcomic that was pretty much a parody of, like, a, uh, storage and sorcery kind of concepts. And I figured, you know, since no one at the time, when I was working on, on the series at Newgrounds, I was there as a fan first. Seeing how no one has done a Four Swords parody, I was like, why don't I make my own? And the light bulb just went on. So, as you can see, we have the four links here. Red, blue, purple, and green. Now, I should point out that when I created four swords, I based their personalities mainly on their colors. I understand that the manga version is um, drastically different. Alright? So, there's no need to compare the manga to... Uh, to my series because they're two completely different things. Like I said, I focused mainly on the colors of each character, with being red being the hothead, blue being the the cool, intelligent one, and purple. I said, screw it, I'll just make him the um, the noob of the group, the rookie. As weird as this may seem, I actually kind of got the influence from Star Fox. Um, since I played a lot of Star Fox 64 back in my youth. But uh, also, you could probably... You could also probably make the, um, the comparison to the Ninja Turtles, because... In hindsight, it makes more sense, because I was also a Ninja Turtles fan. But in this case, Blue is the leader, uh, Red is the, the hothead, that one stays that one stays as it is. Yellow would be the, 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 party, the party turtle. And the purple one's the intelligent one, so there... I know it changes a little bit, but it's still the same concept. 
But anyway. With those two examples, you kind of get the idea of the four-man ensemble. <coughs> Let's see. Just making sure everything's right here. Yes, yeah, so I am using an emulator for this. I don't know if there will be some dips in performance. I hope, hope not, but who knows. Hope everyone can hear me fine. Hope everyone can see the screen here. I had to modify the screen so it could be more uh, acceptable, as you can see. So, see, it, it seems a little odd to actually put like the screen like right in the bottom, but it's the only choice I got. So, anyway, without further ado. Let's begin. Yes, of course, this game is multiplayer, but uh, we have to play single player. For those who have not played the Anniversary Edition, single player means that you technically control two links. Your main link, which would be green, and you get to choose one of the other three links. So, if you follow my series, it's either the hothead, the intelligent one, or the noob. Let's stick with red, because red is usually like the, um, the, the favorite of the, of the four characters. Being the one that usually screws up the most. Uh, I should point out that when I made the series, I never really played Four Swords at the time because I didn't know how to. Well, through emulation, I mean, because I never really owned the original game. But uh, over the years, once um, people started figuring out how emulation worked and having like Game Boy Advance do the whole multiplayer thing online, uh, you know, through, uh, I think, Visual Boy Advance and other emulators. <clears throat> Eventually, uh, doors started to open, and I was made, was able to um, play the game in multiplayer form before the Anniversary Edition came out. Let's go to the Chambers of Insight here. Welcome to the Chambers of Insight. You will find many traps and puzzles in the areas ahead. We will give you advice that will aid you in your quest. Do not fail to heed it. Even if you do listen well to all of our lessons, you must also avoid be careless. If you are not careful, you may run into situations where you hit a dead end at an R and are unable to proceed in your quest. If that happens, press start and select retry to challenge the floor again. You will be able to start that. You will be able to start the same floor from the beginning. Sorry, I got a little distracted there. Uh, first, try talking to my friend near the wall over there. Press A to talk. This guy. Okay, those glimmering circles you see before you are warp zones. When each of you stands on one, all will be transported to a different area where you can learn more about the controls and how to use various items. Begin by standing on the warp zones ahead. The, below, the one below will take you back to the map. Also, when you are playing by yourself, you can switch between heroes by pressing L and R. Skillfully switch between heroes to make to make your way to the warp zone. So yes, you can actually yeah, play in two players, two player mode here. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you the option to play four player because it would be a little too complex that way. Though it's kind of a missed opportunity that you can't control all four at once, not like the GameCube game. But essentially, you kind of get the idea here. Talk to these fairies. They'll guide you on how you're supposed to do things. But sword, But as you can see, Four Swords has always been a party game at heart. It always tried to be something new and unique. On red. Which one? Okay. What'd you get? Oopies. One thing I should point out is that it was incredibly tricky trying to find um, uh, the Four Swords soundtrack available for the episodes. Because there were times where I had to depend on MIDI versions of the game 
uh, of the game's uh, soundtrack. Other times I had to directly record it from an emulator. Yeah, we're talking like 2006, 2007, so it was it was really tricky back then. Right. <clears throat> so when it comes to this, I think it's just a, a function here regarding the. You can open a treasure chest by pressing A. Yellow rupees that sometimes appear after you. Yes. Okay. Right now, how was it that you actually pushed these? There we go. Right, you press the whistle button, which would be X, and you get them working together. Whoa, 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 whoa! That was a trap. Alright. So yes, this is a... <laughs> this was a kind of a clever uh, concept of using swords you know, climbing swords together to do the whole spark thing. I mean, that's pretty cool. <laughs> no crossing swords, am I right? When it comes to rescuing princesses, no crossing swords. Okay. I, know, I, know. I, need, I need to focus. I've been rambling a little too much. The main idea is to press the four switches. Okay. Come on. And it's funny how these things are called ropes. If you can't tell the difference between a rope and a snake, you're in real trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's a reference to the angry video game nerd. Excuse me. There's the key. Let's see if I can get some hearts. Even better. Yeah, later on... Ooh, I got a root for her. Yeah, later on there'll be berries and like, um... Oh, maybe some lag issues, sorry about that. Yeah, later on in like Minish Cap, there are like these stamina berries. I actually go as far back as probably, um... Some of the Game Boy games. Oracle of Ages, Seasons, and, uh... Link's Awakening. Areas of water... All right, you can swim here, press A. Let's go over here. Swim against the current. In this part, <laughs> just press um, press B in this case. Of course, this is the main tutorial map. Before I do that, hang on. Ah, I forgot about these little creatures. It's been a while since I played this game, to be honest. Now, officially, I actually, I actually do have it. Well, uh, the Four Swords Anniversary Edition. It's actually, um, well, technically speaking, I don't have it. But my niece is 3DS. Uh, she actually has it on her uh, 3DS. She hasn't probably touched it in a while. But yeah, I downloaded it for her, considering how it was a free download at the time. Come on, grab the... I think it's called the Nat Hat. 
yeah, it's pretty much the uh, precursor to the Minish Cap. Uh, I need to get some hearts. What should I do? Hey, come here for a sec. <laughs> That's the fun part about Four Swords, you get to be jerks to one another sometimes. Sorry. It's been a while since I played this. Getting a little laggy on my end. You know, I just realized something. The little whist the the whistle mechanic. I think this later influenced Pikmin. Come here. You're probably wondering why I had to do that. Because apparently. It really depends. Let's say if player one sees the... Um, it, it's a little hard to explain, but it's one of those... Um, one of those bridge mechanics where um, you have to technically go to one or go to the other, but only one player can see it. Let's say, for example, if player one is green, then the only one that could go through that bridge is green. If red goes in it, or if purple or blue goes in it, it falls to the abyss. So... Kind of a unique mechanic there. Let's see? Oh, uh, yes. This is another one of those mechanics that was also in Mario 64. I think it was like in the Hazy Maze Cave. Score! Hey, don't hog all the fun. Uh, sometimes these can get a little tricky. There we go. One. Okay. Next one. Too easy. Let's go to the next one here. Red, come on! Yeah. Now, I should point out that Triforce in the middle, that wasn't in the original version. This is an upgraded, uh, an upgraded port of the game. Yeah, I actually used some of the themes uh, from the game here. But it was a little tricky to find the soundtrack. Ah, uh, yes, the Lost Woods. <laughs> yeah, I actually used some of the sprites from from this actual level. I think it was for episode eight, and it was the time where like Red was trying to explain um, where he got the hook shot. Like, all he remembers is that he was in this haze and, and he was in the Lost Woods. But he was just, he couldn't find his way out. 
again, that was just a dream sequence. He was just so wasted. He, just, he didn't even know what he was doing. Ah, crap. Got the Anthrox here. So the first part of the of the level is the Lost Woods. I mean, you could explore a little more in detail, but it's pretty much like a uh, like a, a four by six grid or something like that, I guess. Come on! Whoa! I believe there's those are gels. <clears throat> what else is there over here? Right, I forgot I had the bombs. <clears throat> hey, I need your help. On second thought, never mind. Puzzle has in store for us. Right. Sorry about that. Ah, crap. What else we got? <laughs> Again, apologies if there's some occasional lag during the uh, recording. Uh -uh. There we go. I forget if those are mole germs or not. Or is it mole drum? Mole drum? It's been a while. Come on. And another trap. That was a weird one. Hmm. How is it that I defeated this guy? Yep, bombs.
That reminds me of a joke that I wanted to do regarding Paul's voice. For those who aren't familiar with those characters that uh, appear in like, the first Zelda game. <clears throat> in the original version of uh, the first Legend of Zelda, you could actually play as Paul. You can uh, kill off Paul's voice uh, using the microphone in, uh, I think, the second controller. But they had to alter it because uh, eventually you had to use a flute to kill it off. But since you required, like, a microphone to kill a Pulse voice, I was thinking, just imagine, like, some of the links just swearing at it. That's the only way it kills it. Ah, but that's just me rambling. And this one, you literally have to grab both handles. There we go. And split them up. Hang on, I have to... Get this guy to move. Make a wish. Hey, now what? Again, it's been a long since I've played this game, so... Red's got the key. What the hell was that for? Keep it again. Come on. Got a little distracted. Okay, so... I'm trying to think. What to do next? Ah, uh, yes. Because <clears throat> there was just something blocking my path. I'm trying to think. Where should I go now? Should have done that sooner. I wasn't sure if those things would actually explode. What else do we have? Now, I will admit, I have not played uh, Triforce Heroes, because apparently that game is not exactly fun by yourself. It's more for multiplayer. But, yeah, try finding... Try finding Zelda... Uh, big Zelda fans together in, uh, in a group. Yeah, most of the Zelda fans I know, they live in another country. Ah, of course, now I got an idea. Should have thought of this before. There over, what's over here? Nothing? Uh, just to fall off that waterfall. Sorry. I got this. Red, you stole my thunder. Ah, 
Yeah, when I wrote the series, I've always wanted to focus on the uh, on the banter between red and green, almost as if they're like constantly arguing, like uh, Fox and Falco, or uh, or Leonardo and Raphael. That's always been like the, the whole dynamic of Forza, just he hearing them argue all the time and, and almost getting nothing done. Okay. <clears throat> what else? Supposed to go through here. Oh, right, right. Now we see the the path. I'm not sure if this actually had a a, a roll button. No, not through here. Over here. There it is. Yeah, that took a little longer than expected. But again, it's either I finish this or or just tell you the stories of like how uh, of the whole Force Wars misadventures episodes behind the scenes. Right, this one's tricky because it's color coded. Red has to attack red, green has to attack green. Be a little tricky. Let's see. Get him! Ah. You know, I could have just gotten this. Maybe I can use it for later. No, 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 no. Ah. Help. Okay. No, no, you. The control can get a little tricky when you're controlling two characters at once. At least the fairy helped out. Yeah, green, keep him busy. I got him. Good going, red. Run. Keep him busy. What are you doing? Just trying to imagine them going back and forth. Like, what are you doing? Evo! Come on! Almost got it. Red, get him! Round and round he goes. 
Go! Ah, we sp I got a little too distracted with that. Keep him busy. Okay. Now, get him. Oh, time. My rupees. I'll admit, I feel a little rusty, because I haven't really played uh, War Swords in a long time. Well, I have an idea involving one of the links with a fairy fountain, but uh, I'll probably save that for later. Done well together, so much treasure. IW. Little eggs waiting to hatch into heroes. Grant you each a silver key. <clears throat> Bobby, collect the three silver keys of the Great Fairies Forest, Ice, and Flame Path. A flame, the path to Buddy's palace shall open. You can then make your way there to rescue Princess Zelda. Onward, little hero eggs. So yes, um, <clears throat> Four Swords has always been like a competition type of game. Now, um, what we could do is maybe save this for another video if you guys are interested. Um, let me know in the comments below if you wanted me to check out the other levels for a future video. And regarding Four Swords, yes, I am making it. Right, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get back on track on things, trying to find that motivation to uh, make more Zelda content. I have been making some more um, Mortal Kombat parodies, as you can see. Again, I was just trying to find that that spark, trying to find that inspiration, that motivation to continue again. And, uh, YouTube hasn't exactly been helping, but I'll find a way to continue. So remember to like, share, subscribe, hit the notifications icon, all that jazz. And uh, you can also support me on Patreon. And there's also another um, um, another site called Co uh, called actually it's called Coffee, but it's pronounced sorry it's pronounced Coffee, but it's Co. Fi. That's how it's spelled. I'll, I'll put a link in the description uh, just for more detail. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the Let's Play here. And uh, again, if you guys want me to continue the Let's Play, just leave it in the comments below and tell me which uh, which one of the options should I take next. Next, uh, The Talus Cave, Death Mountain, Yeah, at this point it's going to be those two. Because either the Talus Cave or Death Mountain. Once uh, we finish those two, we get to uh, the, the little Triforce Path, which is where the, uh, they do references to A Link to the Past, to a Link's Awakening, and um, even the first Zelda game. So let me know in the comments. So take care, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.